What's up everybody? So uh, we've got a very different type of video today. We're basically going to be doing just a solid pan of the entire workbench while I pour an entire set of gray gizzard shads. Um, I'm working on some swim bait orders and somebody had suggested a long time ago, I was doing a live stream, you know, in the live streams obviously are uncut, unedited. And so, you know, they can go 45 minutes to an hour. And um, I asked if anyone ever wanted to see a video of me just doing a raw pour, not talking the whole time, not really doing any edits, just to see what it really looks like to do an entire cycle of baits. Um, and they said, yes, we would absolutely watch that. And I thought they were absolutely crazy. But um, I have so many baits to pour that I didn't really want to stop and completely switch gears and film regular content. So I'm just going to set up the camera for one of these pours. And we're just going to go with it. I've got a live stream of some arm wrestling on. I'm a big arm wrestling fan, so I'm watching East vs. West 7 over in Istanbul, Turkey. And uh, I've got to pour a set of 20 dotted 4-inch gray gizzard chads which is no easy thing. So uh, here we go. I may chime in a little bit and say a few things along the way, um, but this is a raw unedited pour of a very tricky color in a small size bait. And uh, hey, I hope the memory card holds out. Um, I may fill up all the space before I'm done. I really don't know. So right now I'm basically just finishing up pouring the little shad dots. Uh, most of them were already poured uh, prior to me starting uh, filming. So I've got just a few more hot plates already uh, hot. Um, so these are kind of preheating while I'm finishing up uh, the hard part. You know, pouring uh, 40 kill dots here uh, takes longer than the actual pour itself, uh, at least for me. Always try to clean off the uh, spout there. Helps with the whole process.
So we might actually cheat here um, and cut rolling while we're just waiting on the molds to uh, get to full temperature. There's really no point in filming just time where we're doing completely nothing. Um, these are at 205 degrees. I want to pour them at about 270, 275. Um, so we might cut a little time out here just so that y'all aren't watching completely nothing. But I would say we probably have 10 or 15 minutes left of preheat time. RVJ is about to lose. This is. This is how we spend our time. Oh, couldn't get a grip. Come on. Yeah, got him. RVJ talks too much trash. Can't back it up. All right, so we are pretty much uh, hot enough now preheating to where we can start cooking our first color, which is belly color. Guess we'll have to try to do some drumming for y'all at, at, at some point, huh? See what we can do. So yeah, lots of just kind of downtime, you know, waiting for molds to preheat, waiting for molds to cool down, waiting for microwaves to finish, waiting for plastic to come out of the vac pot. And this is why this stuff takes so much time. It's actually not the physical pour which takes so long. It's all the prep, basically. Getting our white pearl going here. Just regular white mica powder, nothing fancy. No uh, shifts or, or, or chameleons or anything. It's a, it's a tricky color for me to get right, but it's all pretty basic, just liquid pigments and standard powders. Yeah, that looks about right. We're gonna give it another small preheat or a small reheat and then vac it. We actually had some of the gold for the vein um, left over. It's just 
traditional gold mica powder and then I cut it with a little bit of black to sort of dull the gray and also to darken it. It's, it's a little bit of like a charcoal gold, if you will. So we will just basically just be remelting this puck. And we'll go ahead and throw that in now in the meantime. Probably about a minute 45 on that. You guys can even time me. Boil and spit, which means they're about ready. Got a left-handed match, don't see that very often. Lots of waiting. And then I think once we get a little more into the actual pour, we'll maybe bring the camera a little bit closer. Looking good. So a lot of times when I take a cup of plastic out of the microwave, there'll be a little bitty kind of ring of bubbles around the edge. I'll actually just take a spoon and just kind of scoop around the edge and just manually remove any bubbles that are sticking to the side of the cup. Seems to work pretty well for me. Just like that. Well, you can't really see, but you get the get the idea. Yeah, so that needs a little bit longer right there. Maybe 30 seconds. And in we go. Oh yeah, I was gonna bring the camera a little bit closer. All right, we'll try this.
Yeah, so there's half done right there. Let me peek around here and make sure the camera's recording. Okay, still good. I think those worked out. So now what we're gonna do is uh, set this aside. We have a little bit of belly color left and uh, we're just gonna check on our gold vein. We're not ready for this yet. It's ready, but having just poured those bellies in, we need them to sit for just a little bit. Yeah, they're still, they're still just a little too jelly. Good news is the next color is ready. And so we want to try to pour everything congruently, I guess. Um, you know, even though this hot plate does a great job holding temperature, you know, we still don't want to waste time, right? We, we still don't want to be sitting around, you know, having to wait too long to get the next color ready to go. You know, we want to shoot for a little bit of efficiency. So while, while we're waiting to pour the, the gold veins we're gonna go ahead and cook up what's gonna be our top color that way by the time we do pour the middle gold veins that color is gonna be ready to mix and pour so we'll go two and a half minutes on that because that was almost a full cup of plastic like I said this is coming up next Looking good, looking good.
try to get a thumbnail out of that, as goofy as that is. All right, veins are poured, and our top color is ready for action. So, this one I always enjoy doing is the top color of Gray Gizzard, because it is a good one. Six drops of black. And then we're actually gonna take some more of that gold and just pour that Pour the still hot gold in there so that we have a gold pearl effect. Two drops of watermelon 101. One, two. <clears throat> a little bit of silver pearl. And I mean just a smidge. Oops, we gotta clear off the spoon here. A little bit of silver pearl. Like a micro smidge, y'all. Look at that. And then the same with some brown pearl. I've had this probably a decade. As you can see, I don't use it much. It's, oops. It's still mostly full. mixing all this up sometimes the veins in the small mold in the four inch want to run down the tails too far so you may have seen me blowing on them I'm trying to like keep the veins stopped at a certain point if that makes sense y'all so we can see the finish line here um, we just need a quick reheat on this and then it's got to make a trip to the vacuum pot all right and uh, then from there we're just filling in the tops I really wish I had something to drink I'm thirsty
It's already set up. Well, kind of set up. Try to clear your cups and get ready for the next pour after this one sort of thing. Clearing out as much junk as you can. happy with my veins I got great consistency on the length of the veins so normally this would have taken a little bit longer because we would have had to have prepared the uh, gold veins from scratch plastic uh, raw plastic so you know that may be cut 10 minutes of total runtime off of this pour. So I guess sometimes it, it actually takes me a little bit longer out here to do the same thing. But I I had that done from the five inches that I already did today and uh, just wanted to kind of recycle those same materials. So at this point, we're ready to pour the uh, final top color. We can shut our hot plate off, basically, um, because the molds are, are so hot, they're gonna hold enough temperature for me to do this top pour and still get our bond. So what I found is it's better to under pour it a little bit on the first pass and then come back and add a drop or two till you think you've got them perfectly filled out. Because once you over pour, you can't go back.
think I over poured that one. All right, so I'm obviously not going to roll the camera while they're uh, cooling down, but there it is. Um, yeah, that's pretty much almost every part of pouring an entire set of baits, start, start to finish. I, uh, I kind of purposely didn't want to show you all the, uh, the shad dots because that adds so much time and that's not something that I do every pour. Um, so yeah, anyway, but now we get to sit, you know, for an hour. I mean, it, it'll be an hour at least before we can demold these. Um, so we're obviously just going to hang out, clean up. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll come back to those once they're done and then demold them and, um, show you all the results. But yeah, that's sort of a, un, a, a unfiltered, unedited look at, um, just what it takes to, to do one set of baits, at least the way that I do them and, and uh, the, you know, some of the colors that I do. And um, we have so much more to go. It's absolutely, yeah. So anyway, we will meet y'all back with some results and uh, I hope y'all have enjoyed a little bit of a different look here. So now that we're kind of letting things cool down and we're done with the meat and potatoes of the video, just wanted to show y'all um, some of the colors here, All right? So that's the top color that we kind of just poured. Told y'all a little bit about the recipe, or actually the exact recipe. And then, uh, of course, there's the gold vein. Um, we had kind of already dumped the puck for the white pearl. But that is what we're going for. Here's one of my favorites right here, blue craw shiner. Yeah, look at those. Exquisite. Love the effects in this one. It's obviously dead on blue craw top, dead on 24 karat gold shift vein, and then dead on snow shine belly. So, just did the eyeballs for these while we're waiting on our four inchers to, uh, to cool down. They are still too hot to touch, but Here's some recent work. We have uh, we have been busy, to say the least. And that's just one of those. We we're uh, filling up several of those today. Yeah, look at those. I like seeing consistency. That's uh, that's what we have spent just so much time out here practicing is. Consistency of the kill dots, size of the kill dots, or shad dots, consistency of the uh, the, the height of the vein, which uh, I think is something that we mentioned in a, in a previous video. Yeah, looking awesome there. All 20, and then we actually have some of the five inches from earlier to kind of compare. So, yeah. They are Identical twins, just one's the big brother, one's the little brother. Yeah, there it is. And now comes uh, a really long uh, part, 
that we're, we're not going to put in today's video. But now is cleaning up any flashing in the, you know, in, any flashing in the tails, anything like that. We have to manually clean all of that, lay them out, and then glue on eyeballs. So between those and the five inchers, <clears throat> we are continuing to roll on today. But I hope y'all enjoyed a little bit of a different style video. Well, there it is, everyone. That's pretty much um, almost minute by minute what it's like to, to spend an hour out here. Uh, if you were just a fly on the wall watching me pour baits, that's pretty much it. So uh, I don't know if that's too exciting or not, but um, that's what we do a lot of around here. I've got a bunch of injection stuff I got to finish up. I'll show you all some frogs here real quick um, before we sign off. But um, yeah, you know, kind, kind of cool. Just set up the camera and hey, that's a lot less work and editing and angles that I have to worry about. Just set it up and, and do my thing as I would normally do. So anyway, hope you all enjoyed a little bit of a different uh, snapshot of what goes on out here. If you want to see more videos like this, um, just holler and uh, we can certainly make that happen. But um, we're going to sign this one off. Uh, we have some really exciting silicone molds that my good buddy uh, Noah from Slim's Lures um, sent me the Gobi mold I'm really looking forward to. I think that's gonna be a super challenging mold to pour well. So I'm looking forward to the challenge. I have not poured in silicone in a long time. So I'm sure my chops are super rusty pouring in silicone, um, but hey, I'm up for a challenge. So let me show you all these frogs real quick and we're out of here. Yeah, so this is really cool. This is the dead on Kiwis. And uh, I made these for a uh, guy in Canada. So it's a mix of the, uh, of, of the new AI, AR, God, I can't even talk, because they're the same. This is the new AI AR frog, okay? And then here's my custom Florida frog. So yeah, lots of goodies there. Lots of goodies. He's got frogs for days, and uh, I got to make a bunch more stuff for him. But yeah, Kiwis frogs, check them out. Two awesome frog molds, uh-oh. Yeah, super cool. Yep, that is dead on Kiwis pigment, cut with a little bit of black, um, just to add a, a black base to it, and uh, just some medium-sized black flake, so. Excellent, thanks for tuning in today, y'all. We got to keep pouring out here, but uh, wanted to um, wanted to take this opportunity to do the more uncut video. So, see you guys next time. Yeah, these bad boys right here. This is like a little drop shot worm um, that appears to have a hook slot in it. And uh, look at this little goby, just for size. That's my index finger. Look at some of the little details in there that I've got to get plastic in. Uh, yeah, we're going to have our work cut out for us with those. Awesome molds. Awesome guy. So hopefully that's coming soon. Just a video like that's going to take a lot longer to film than today's video. And I just knew I wasn't going to have time.